14 months before the Apollo 11 mission, Neil Armstrong was practicing the spacecraft's landing in a simulation for the moon. However, things took a turn when he attempted a similar landing on Earth, but he failed and crashed the spacecraft. Luckily, he saved his life by ejecting a few seconds before the crash. After that, when Armstrong successfully landed his lunar module on the moon, conspiracy theorists began questioning how they could land a spacecraft on the moon when they had failed to land it on Earth. It's been 54 years since Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon, but there are still some people who believe that the moon landing was faked by NASA and America. If we pay attention to these conspiracy theories, they present some seemingly valid points that may make a regular person question whether NASA lied to us. Are these moon landings truly filmed in a barren desert? Let's try to find out. During the Cold War between America and the Soviet Union, a space race emerged between the two countries. The Soviet Union took the lead by launching the first unmanned space mission to the moon, named Luna 1. However, it didn't achieve a lunar landing. Instead, it conducted a flyby, becoming the first spacecraft to reach the vicinity of the moon. This mission happened a decade before the Apollo 11 mission in 1959. So, it raises questions about why a country with advanced space technology at that time couldn't land on the moon even once, while the US successfully landed six times during the Apollo missions. A conspiracy theorist named Ralph René conducted an experiment by wearing an astronaut glove and placing his hand inside a special container. Using a compressor, he removed all the air. After the air was gone, he faced difficulty moving his fingers. René argued that, under such conditions, pressing the camera shutter or focusing on a photo was impossible. He questioned how NASA managed to capture perfect and sharp pictures on the moon, and his question was valid. This question was addressed by aerospace engineer Jay Windley. According to him, the camera used for moon pictures was a modified Hasselblad 500EL. Specifically adapted for lunar missions, this camera could attach to the astronaut's suit. The shutter button was made larger to facilitate easy pressing with gloves. Additionally, the focus ring was modified to be operated effortlessly with pressurized gloves. Due to limited visibility caused by their helmets, astronauts practiced using the camera in a spacesuit on Earth, ensuring they could capture perfect pictures in space. These pictures caught the attention of another conspiracy theorist, a former head of the Rocketdyne company. According to him, the shadows in the pictures are not parallel to each other. During the Apollo 11 mission on the moon, the only light source was the sun. Therefore, the shadows in the pictures should be parallel. This has led many to believe that the pictures were taken in a studio with an artificial light source. The reasoning is that the closer the light source, the more separated and non-parallel the shadows would appear. As seen in this picture, the shadow of the astronaut is in the opposite direction to the shadow of the moon lander. While it may seem plausible that shadows casting in opposite directions result from an artificial light source, the direction of shadows depends on various factors. These include irregularities in the surface on which the shadow is cast, the need for objects to be parallel for shadows to be parallel, and the impact of wide-angle photography, which can make shadows appear non-parallel. Ralph René raised another question regarding how the other side of the flag on the moon appears perfectly lit when sunlight is projecting onto it. The answer is straightforward. The flag was made of nylon, and this material has the unique property of allowing light to pass through easily illuminating both sides. However, the question of how the flag was waving in the absence of air on the moon was also raised. According to Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin, they hadn't practiced planting the flag on the moon. As a result, they had to twist and push the flag's rod downward to secure it on the lunar surface. Due to the moon's low gravity, more force was needed to plant the flag resulting in considerable movement. This movement might give the impression that the flag was waving as if there were air, even though there is no atmosphere on the moon. Ralph René raised another critical question that can't be explained within Earth's atmosphere. He pointed out that if we blow air on land, it creates a crater on the surface. The blower is undoubtedly less powerful than the thruster of the moon lander. So the question is, why didn't the lunar module create any such disturbance at the landing site? Physicists explain that when the moon lander was just a few feet above the lunar surface, the rocket motors were turned off. As it touched the lunar ground, 75% of its thrust was already reduced. Let's assume that before landing, the thrust was only 25%, roughly equivalent to 12,258 newtons. This force would undoubtedly create a hole on Earth. However, the reason it didn't on the moon cannot be explained within Earth's atmosphere. What's your opinion on this? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching.